Thank you for joining me today when we take a look at the drama that has unfolded between Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner in their divorce and child custody battle. My name is attorney Amanda Schaefer. I am an attorney in New York. I've been practicing for over a decade. We focus on immigration and family law. I have specific expertise in international child abduction cases. And we're talking about this today because it is a growing problem that's incredibly serious and incredibly complex. So hopefully we can clear a few things up. So let's take a look at the facts. The parties were married, I think, 2017. They had two children born in 2020 and 2022. Due to the party's professions, they and the children had never really resided in one place for a significant period of time leading up to their split, which occurred, seems like, on August 15th, 2023. They got into a fight. September 1st, Jonas files for a divorce in Florida. September 5th, Turner finds out about it on social media. And September 20th, uh, Turner files uh, for uh, under the Hague Convention Against Child Abduction in the New York Federal District Court. So one of the reasons these cases are so complex is because it involves the intersection of multiple state law, federal law, international treaty, and foreign law. So let's take a look at so what some of those laws are. First, we have the Hague Convention Against Child Abduction. This is an international treaty that applies in very limited circumstances. The children um, that have allegedly been wrongfully withheld or retained have to be under the age of 16. They have to be, have been removed or wrongfully retained from their what is called habitual residence, which I'll explain shortly. This has to be done in breach of the left behind parents' rights. And that left behind parent has to have been exercising those rights. Next, we have the UCCJEA or the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act. That is a federal law, child custody is a state issue. This is a federal model law that has been adopted by all 50 states in one way or another, but very, most of the states are very close to the federal law. It treats foreign countries as a sister state, especially under the Hague. It considers the home state, which would be equivalent to the habitual residence of the child, to be where the child has resided for the last six months prior to filing does not include temporary absences from the state. If the child does not reside in one state for at least six months, then we'll go to the significant connections test. Where does the child have more significant connections? And it also, if there's no significant connections, there's also temporary emergency jurisdiction, which we're not gonna talk about today, but can be very important in cases like this. Even more law we gotta talk about. We got the Florida law. Of Florida, like New York, has adopted the UCCJEA, six months equals home state of the child. One thing to know about Florida is when you file for divorce, you do it in family court. That makes all the pleadings and court documents confidential. So I was not able to review Jonas's set of facts. And finally, we have foreign law. In this case, it's English and Welsh law. We have to see what the law, that law says about the rights of custody. Basically, it's very similar to here. It says that mom and dad have equal rights to custody and that restricting one parent from seeing a child is considered harmful. And again, that's very similar here in the US. So what is Sophie Turner's position? She says that home, England is the home state or state of habitual residence for the children. She says that prior to their split, the parties had a plan to permanently reside there she said they went looking for houses. They even um, entered into a contract to purchase a house that was supposed to close at the end of December. And she said the kids have significant connections there. They, their doctors and their dentists there. The older child has gone to nursery school there and the older child has participated at the play box theater there. Obviously, both parties have family in both countries. And she's saying that Jonas will not return the child's passports, and this is in violation of her right to custody. Currently, the children are with Turner in New York, but she cannot return home because she does, Jonas will not give her the passports. 
what is Joe Jonas's position? He's saying that Florida is a home state. The only thing we can tell about his filings is that in order to file for a divorce in New York, he has to claim that the parties and the children resided there for at least six months prior to filing. He says Sophie knew about the divorce, and that's significant because he claims that there's automatic orders that were entered into that said that neither party could remove the children from the jurisdiction, and that if he gives her the passports, that he would be in violation of the court order. And the last thing is I said dot, 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 question mark, because again, his pleadings are confidential, so the only facts I was able to get were, were from what his representative said in news articles, which can only be so accurate. So I don't know what other claims he has to the home state in Miami, except I do know they did, the parties did have a house there and they did recently sell it. So let's do, let's look at our legal analysis here. This is a story of jurisdiction, which is a, a snooze fest, if you ask me. Jurisdiction is not the most exciting topic we could talk about. First of all, it's really complex. As I showed you, we just went through four separate different areas of law, two of which I'm not licensed to practice in Florida and England. But as, as an attorney who does these type of cases, I have a case right now, for example, going on in Kenya, part of my job is to learn the custody law in that country because it does come into play. Both parties, I believe, were very strategic in their court filings. Joe Jonas spent, wasted no time. He immediately filed in Florida and he filed in the family court where it is confidential and the public cannot access the pleadings. Sophie, on the other hand, as soon as she was, she says the part she was supposed to fly back with the children on September 21st, I believe. So as soon as the passports were not given back to her, she filed in New York Federal District Court, which means that the pleadings are public, putting pressure on Jonas. The big question that we have here is: Does the Hague Convention against child abduction really apply here? I say no. The reason is this. The Hague Convention is meant in a situation where the left behind parent has no access to the children. So either the, the, the other parent took them from, where, from their habitual residence um, and just in violation of rights, or they took them with permission, but then said, I'm not giving the child back. In this case, the children are with Sophie right now. So she has access to them. The only thing she doesn't have is their passport, so she can't return home. But that's the Hague Convention is not for that situation. So I believe that it does not apply. However, there should have been a UCCJEA analysis. Now, her attorneys did not file a UCCJEA as one of the claims in their federal lawsuit. Um, so I'll go over it really briefly now. But when you file a lawsuit, you can put as many claims as you feel is relevant. And I do believe this should have been in there. Um, Again, six months is the home state. If there is six months, in this case, there's no six months, it, uh, it appears. So then we do a significance connections test. Children have been all over the country, probably the world, but they've never really resided in one place at one time, again, due to their age, due to the party's professions. So it's not clear under the UCCJEA who, which state or country would have jurisdiction. And there's no Florida court orders. Uh, again, I, I read that his representative was claiming it would be a violation um, if Sophie was not served with a divorce yet, and she did find out on social media, even if there was automatic court orders that said you cannot remove the child from the jurisdiction, it wouldn't go into effect until she was served. So Jonas could have given the passport back if that were really what the order said, and she could have gone back to England with the kids as planned. Um, it, it also is important to note that there doesn't appear to be any court orders on file. Um, I was able to see the docket for Florida, but not the automatic orders. I'm not an attorney in Florida. I, in New York, there's no automatic orders. It's once you file for divorce or custody, that immediately stops you from leaving the jurisdiction with the child. So who do I project to win? On the New York case, which involves the Hague Convention, I think it's very clear that Joe Jonas will win. 
if I was his attorneys, I'd be filing a motion to dismiss at the moment, stating that the Hague doesn't apply because she's with the kids right now. They're, that's meant to reunite parents with their children once they've been wrongfully uh, withheld or retained by the other parent or by someone else. And I think in terms of habitual residence, which is similar to the home state, it's, it's about where you've uh, legally resided, but it's also about where you have your significant connections. It kind of brings that into play too. Habitual residence isn't a term we use in the U.S., but it is a term we use under the Hague Convention. And it seems, according to Sophie Turner's facts, assuming they're correct, because again, I will reiterate that I didn't get to see Joe Jonas's facts, or at least his full facts. If they were planning, they look at we look at the intent of the parties in the Second Circuit uh, Court of Appeals, which is where the New York case was filed, when we take a look at the parents' shared intent, that's usually going to reign supreme in this type of situation. And they appears they had a shared intent to, to raise the children in England. If that's the case, England is going to have jurisdiction over the deciding who where the habitual residence is, and that will likely be England that becomes the habitual residence of the children, which means that's where the divorce will be processed. So let's see our key takeaways here. International child abduction is complex. It involves the intersection of state, federal law, international treaty, and, and foreign law. And it is only applicable in limited circumstances. In fact, it is so complex, this video was meant to be four minutes, we're going on 12. Who will prevail? Again, I believe Joe Jonas will prevail in New York if his attorneys file a motion to dismiss because the Hague Convention is not applicable. The habitual residence will not be decided with the New York case. Turner's allegedly filed in England as well for divorce. There will be a, a fight between England and Florida for which state is a habitual residence or home state of the children. It will only be at that point that they start to look at the divorce issues. And the other thing to note is that even though Jonas is holding on to the passwords for the children, Turner can still get back to England with the children. She can get um, another copy of passports or she can apply for a travel document with her uh, the, uh, the English embassy. That is all for today. If you found this helpful, please like us, comment, share it, save it so that others can um, find this as well. This is a very complicated topic that I will get into further detail in the future and we'll keep our eye on. And that is all for today. Uh, if, if you need legal help, our contact information is on the screen right now. Like I said, we do unfortunately do a lot of these child abduction cases and they can be incredibly complex. You really want to make sure you have someone who knows what they are doing and how to do it properly. Uh, I will provide an update on this case going forward if any interesting details do come up. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. That is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.